Hi, I'm Mr. Simons, and this is the first in a series of videos looking all about monetary policy. What we're going to do is we'll start from the beginning, looking at the Reserve Bank of Australia and interest rates, go into the cash rate and the actual sort of implementation of monetary policy, and also look at some conflicts in terms of the way monetary policy is traditionally taught and the way that the RBA actually does it. This information is drawn heavily from the material produced by the RBA. They've done um, some excellent papers and explainers looking at monetary policy and how they do the work that they do. So links to all of the information I've got this from is in the description. The first in this series of videos is looking at the RBA and the introduction to monetary policy, including the link between the cash rate and interest rates in the economy. Don't worry if it all sounds really confusing, we're gonna to get to it. Okay, let's get started. So the Reserve Bank of Australia is Australia's central bank. But what's a central bank? What does that even mean? According to the European Central Bank, a central bank is a public institution that manages the currency of a country or group of countries and controls the money supply. So it literally controls the amount of money that is in circulation in an economy. Something important to note is that the RBA, the Reserve Bank of Australia, and many central banks are independent of government. That is, they do their own thing. They don't take their advice or direction from government. And that's something that is enshrined or created in legislation. One of the main tools of any central bank, so the way it really achieves its goals and it does its job, is through the implementation of monetary policy. So this thing, monetary policy, well, that's our focus for this video. So what is monetary policy? Well, in explaining that, we have to go back to the RBA. And the RBA is a very busy institution. It's got a couple of really important goals. For example, it's got to maintain the stability of Australia's currency. It has to maintain full employment in Australia. And it's also trying to improve the economic prosperity and welfare of the Australian people. So a lot to get done, but that's not it. The Reserve Bank of Australia is also responsible for what's known as price stability. That is keeping inflation, the increase in the general level of prices under control. So the Reserve Bank of Australia has this target band or this goal of two to 3%. So that is inflation has to stay within two to 3% over the course of the business cycle. That's the goal of price stability. Monetary policy is the main tool that the RBA uses to achieve its goal. Monetary policy can be defined as the RBA action designed to influence the cost and availability of money in the Australian economy through influencing the general level of interest rates. So let's think about how this works. So every month, except for January, the RBA board gets together meets, looks at developments in the Australian economy, gets the latest briefings, and then decides what's going to happen in terms of the direction of interest rates in the Australian economy. Should interest rates be going up? Should interest rates be going down? Should they go nowhere? Interest rates are very important in terms of macroeconomic policy. So higher interest rates are going to make it more expensive to borrow and invest and more attractive to save rather than spend. So that's going to slow down GDP, uh, slow down economic growth and contract the economy. If you look at lower interest rates though, that's going to make it more attractive to spend rather than save. And so there'll be more borrowing investing as well because it's cheaper, which will increase economic growth and accelerate economic activity. But here's the thing. The RBA discusses what should happen with interest rates but the RBA doesn't set all of the interest rates in the Australian economy. For example, the RBA doesn't set the level of mortgage rates, personal loans, car loans, doesn't even set the interest rate for savings when people deposit their money with the bank. Instead, what happens is that the RBA changes one rate, one interest rate in the economy, and then that influences all of the interest rates throughout the Australian economy. So why does the cash rate matter in the Australian economy? To see how the RBA changes the cash rate, remember this is the official level of interest rates in an economy, we have to travel to the Australian cash market. You can't actually go there, it just exists electronically. Let's have a look at it in graph form. So this is from the RBA and it is of the Australian cash market. 
So a couple of things to think about first. One is that the price in this market, the price in the Australian cash market represents the interest rate. So the reward for saving or the cost of borrowing in this particular market. The important thing to know is that in the Australian cash market, there is a particular interest rate, and that is known as the cash rate. And so that connects back to our discussion of the RBA. If we look here, we've got our regular demand and supply. You'll notice that supply is a vertical line, um, whereas demand is our usual downward sloping curve. And we'll have a look at that in a sec. Here, are, this is just um, for rate rather than dollars if it was price in a market. So if we're talking about demand, this is the demand for funds. And the demand for funds in this market comes from the commercial banks. So this demand for funds comes from Australia's commercial banks, the banks that are out there lending to the public and dealing with their transactions. If we think about this demand for funds in Australia's commercial banks, that what we've got here is that in terms of the cash market, so that in the Australian cash market, so all of our discussion is relating to that, that what's important to note, and let's just put this in highlight, what's important to note is that these commercial banks, right, they hold what's known as ES accounts with the RBA. So it's kind of like, you know how you have an account with your bank or a business has an account with its bank, all of the banks have an account with the RBA as well, and they're known as ES accounts. So let's say what that means, huh? The ES part here, the ES stands for exchange settlement. So that all of the commercial banks have their own special bank account known as an exchange settlement account that is with the RBA. And all of those accounts are sitting here in the cash market. So we'll just put a little star here. And so that when banks are doing transactions in the cash market, it involves what's known as their ES accounts. And trust me, we're going to come back to this. So don't worry if that's a little bit confusing. Let's switch it up now and let's go to supply. So we've noticed here that the supply of funds here is vertical. It's the same level regardless of the rate that the supply always here will be Q1 in this example. So why is it vertical? What is going on here? So what we can say about the supply here is that the supply, so that in the Australian cash market, the supply of funds is set by the RBA only. There is no other party that is putting money into this market. So what happens is that actually the RBA is the party that says how much cash is in the market. So that what they're doing is essentially the RBA here is that the RBA will fix or set the amount of cash that exists in the market. And we'll see why this is the case in a minute. But it's just important to know that the supply of funds, it's set by the RBA and the RBA alone, and that they can fix the amount of cash that's in the market to achieve their particular goals. And it's vertical because it always stays at whatever level the RBA sets. So the RBA is determining how much cash is in the market. Okay, so that's what the cash market looks like. Let's go a little bit more in detail in terms of ES accounts now. Okay, so now we move on to the next part here. So we're talking about ES accounts, but it's also known as ES balances. If you follow up and read the material from the RBA that I'm taking this information from, that they refer to them as ES balances. And it's just the same thing. You know, the balance is the money that is in your account. And remember that these ES or exchange settlement accounts are the accounts that are held by commercial banks with the RBA. Let's take our example over here. So we'll just highlight here. So let's imagine that the date is Monday, the 20th of April, Monday, the 20th of April. So what happens here is that we have a consumer and this consumer here is going to a shop called Shoes. Shoes, which sells shoes. Two things I want you to note. One thing is that this consumer has their account with Bank A and this consumer has their account with Bank B. Sorry, not this consumer, this company. So what happens in this transaction is that this person from their Bank A account 
pays $220. And in exchange, they get a fancy pair of shoes to wear. So that what happens is, if we go over here, is that at the end of each day, all of the banks settle their transactions with each other. Because you can imagine that on any given day, there are thousands and thousands of these transactions happening. So based on this one experience here, is that, let's say, just from this transaction, is that, okay, so bank A needs to pay bank B $220. But that's just one transaction. That if we think about the end of the the day, all of the transactions that might have happened. So let's say that bank A, all of their customers spend $10,000 with customers of bank B. So consumers and businesses at bank A, they spend $10,000 with bank B. So bank A has to transfer 10 grand to bank B. But on the same day, bank B's customers spend $20,000 with bank A. So they spend twice as much. So this is just one transaction, but if we total all of the transactions that day, that we get this total. So then if we think about it over here, if we bring this across here, okay, if we think about this whole setup then, okay, so then what happens is that, well, bank B owes bank A $10,000 from this day from these transactions. So just pause here if you need to, just take a minute to make sure that this process is okay. Remember that we're looking at the transactions between different banks and they're moving the money across. When you're ready, just unpause it and let's continue. So if we think about it here, that we can say that the amounts banks owe each other are transferred from one bank's ES account to the others. So let's so the amounts that the banks owe each other, they move between the ES accounts in the Australian cash market. So if we think about our example, we're just going back to what we were talking about. In our example, oh, okay, so bank B needs to transfer $10,000 from its ES account to bank A. And that's just referring to this situation here. So bank B must transfer $10,000 to bank A from the ES balance in the Australian cash market. And that then is deposited in the ES balance of bank A. But there's something to think about here. We can see that bank B owes money, but what if, so here's our, what if bank B has insufficient funds in its ES account? What if bank B is actually short and can't transfer this $10,000 from their ES balance to bank A? What if they don't have enough money there? Well, two things can happen there. So bank B can either borrow from the Reserve Bank of Australia, or they can borrow from other commercial banks. So banks that have extra money or surplus funds in their ES accounts. The important thing to know is that that borrowing, so this borrowing will take place at the cash rate because they are borrowing it in the Australian cash market and the price of borrowing is the cash rate. If the cash rate is higher, it is more expensive for banks to borrow funds in the Australian cash market, so their production costs will rise. If the cash rate is lower, it is less expensive for banks to borrow funds in the Australian cash market, so their production costs will fall. Okay, so how does the cash rate connect to the RBA? So remember that the RBA sets the cash rate. The cash rate is that interest rate that occurs in the Australian cash market. And remember, the Australian cash market, which we just had a look at, the RBA supplies the funds and the commercial banks demand them to settle debts with each other. And the interest rate for borrowing or saving is the cash rate. So let's take it step by step. So monetary policy is the process by which the RBA changes the level of the cash rate, the interest rate in the Australian cash market to affect the level of economic activity. So it changes the cash rate that then affects the general level of interest rates and then economic activity will be affected. If the cash rate is higher, it is more expensive for commercial banks to borrow funds 
in the Australian cash market. If they don't have enough money to settle debts with each other and they have to borrow funds from someone else, it's going to be more expensive if the cash rate is higher. So if the cash rate is higher, borrowing is more expensive and production costs for banks will go up. And banks are likely to pass on these higher costs to customers in the form of higher interest rates. So just briefly, higher cash rate, higher borrowing costs in the Australian cash market, banks have got higher costs, pass that to consumers in the form of higher interest rates. And then if you flip the situation, if the cash rate is lower, it is cheaper for banks to borrow funds in the Australian cash market if they need to settle debts with each other, which then means their production costs are lower and they could pass on those savings to customers in the form of lower interest rates. So lower cash rate, lower production costs, potentially lower interest rates in the Australian economy. So the point I'm trying to make is that changes to the cash rate will then affect all interest rates in the Australian economy via the Australian cash market and ES balances. So in this video, we start at the start with monetary policy. We're talking about who is the RBA and what do they do? What is monetary policy and how does it relate to the cash rate and the general level of interest rates in the economy? In the next video, we'll actually start to look at how the RBA changes the cash rate when it says it wants to be lower or higher. How does it actually even do that? Thank you for watching such a lot of information coming at you. If you have any comments, questions or clarifications that are needed, please put them in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching.